Hi there, Year 9. Okay, so I'm going to just do a bit of a show through of the two different schemes of work that you will be moving on to. Now, I've spoken to you a lot about this since we started the course. Um, um, it, it was always my intention to do a show through with you so that you knew what it was entailed in the different courses. So this here is Develop and Explore. Now, Develop and Explore is a more kind of sculpture-based project. Now, both of them have to have observational drawing. That's just a course requirement. Okay, so you'll see here that we've got some, these kind of cube drawings. And we also do spheres and um, cones, just to kind of get you to understand about shading, basic principles of observational drawing. At the same time, we start looking at making these kind of pattern pages. This one obviously based on squares. You'll do one based on squares, one based on circles, one based on triangles, so you get to explore those different shapes. And here, on this board, you'll see those other shapes I was talking about. Spheres here, and then this is the circle pattern page. And at the same time, we've got some observational drawings coming in. So we do the sphere first, and then we draw the apple, because the sphere has helped us to understand how to apply shading. We can then draw the apple, because it's that same circular shape. From the apple, we've gone on to do some lino printing. Both groups will do this, okay? And this is a three colour. You can see the addition of the colours as it moves along. Nice observational drawing there of a pair. Okay, so this is kind of the start of the project. Now, as you produce your work, it goes into your books. Your books stay one-sided, and then we take the information out and we start putting it together into these sheets that you can see here. So we've got here a pepper. We started off with a pepper drawing, and then we moved off into this three-dimensional work layering up using cardboard, using gum strip over the top to give it a smooth surface and then painting and starting to explore different tones that can be created. So again, quite sculptural, a little bit of photography which is done in class and obviously annotation which is essential. From there, you'll go off and you'll start thinking about your own ideas. We do a lettering section, and that's what you can see here. So you can see this is a kind of, it's all based on, a, on an artist called, um, oh, I've completely forgotten his name. Do you know what, it's not gonna come back to me if I put myself under pressure. Anyway, we do a letters and numbers based response, which is just here. This student really enjoyed that. They went on to do some stenciling. Here are the stencils. They make a background. And then they use the stencils to stencil over the top. These here are the personal responses of the artists that they're looking at. Jasper Johns. There we go. It did come back to me eventually. So that's those worksheets. Now this student really kind of enjoyed this lettering part of it. So they ended up making, let's move this out of the way, you can see these more clearly. They ended up making some of these kind of mock-up compositions. And these are all based on an artist that this student found. Now at this point, we went into a uh, working from home if you wanted to at school. And so those are still a work in progress. Now one of the other things we do, is this idea of using found objects. And you can see here this kettle that's spurting out jigsaw puzzle pieces. This is a really fun part of the project. This is one of the things we do towards the beginning of the project. And then another one here that somebody has done using Lego spurting out of the teapot. Really clever responses, very simple, just held together with a glue gun, but highly, highly effective. 
Okay. I'm going to show you another student's work now, just to give you a broad, balanced idea of what is produced in this scheme of work. Okay. What you'll notice then is the similarities. So if you're looking at this piece of work, you can see the square pattern piece, the triangle pattern piece. Oh, actually, that was mixed squares and triangles. This is the square piece. And again, you'll see the cube here and a few other bits. This student looked at Kandinsky, so a little bit of artist research. Slightly different for every student, and that's absolutely fine. Again, the apple boards, observational drawings based on these um, spheres that we did moving it off into print, some little wire structures, and we do explore those in three dimensions, some examples of which you can see here. So really nice three-dimensional fruits. We've got an apple there, and we've got a pear here. Okay, so two really nice examples there. Again, this idea of sculpting and pattern and texture, less, less about the observational drawing, more about the experimenting with ideas. Again, the pepper board, this, the, on this one the, the pear is on here, but we've got the observational drawing of the pepper, we've got some photographs that were done in school, and again, this cardboard relief, built up with layers of cardboard, covered with gum strip, painted on the inside. Now this student went a bit further than the other student. They did some work on Kew Gardens, which was a trip that we did. Hopefully we will be out of the pandemic and you guys might be able to go on this trip. We'll have to see where we are. Nice observational drawings just here. Some photographs that they took of their trip that you can see on this board. This next one you'll recognise from the other student, Jasper Johns, remember this time, same again. Lovely stenciling on a painted background, nice letter and number response there, and some history of art down here at the bottom to give it a context. So that is your develop and explore. Now I will just say, neither of those two projects are finished and that's because we went into a second lockdown. These students are now all working remotely from home and that's where they're developing the final stages of their project. Okay, so that's just to give you a little taster and hopefully that's enough. Now I'm just gonna get some work together for personal landscape so that I can talk you through that project and how that looks. Okay, so this student is a personal landscape student, but interestingly, they started on Develop and Explore. And I think it's important for me to highlight this to you, because I think there's a, a tendency to think that once you've made this decision, it's set in stone and it's not at all. If you start on any of the projects and then you realise a couple of months down the line that it just isn't working out for you, we just move you. Okay? It's really important to me that when you're on this course, you're happy, you're enjoying what you're doing, you're enjoying what you're producing. Because if you're not, you're not going to do the best quality work that you can do. So this student started on Develop and Explore, and that's their sheet. I won't talk you through that because you've seen a couple of those already. And then they made the switch. And they thought, actually, I think I'm going to be happier on personal landscapes. So we started with portraiture and investigations into the face. Now, you should be able to see some of those here. Really beautiful. So we look individually at the eyes and then the noses before we start looking at portraits as a whole. Trying them out in different styles, this is based on Giacometti. Here we have a piece of work by Vince Lowe and the student's response to that just here. And then some other portraits here that they have chosen to draw, one of which, I hope you can see there, is a self-portrait. So you should be able to see already that it's much more drawing based. Okay. 
So we then go on and explore animals. We look at animal skins. You can see that just up the top here. We draw different types of animals. We do some lino printing of animal skins. And we do some drawings of different animals. From that, we move on to landscape. So it's personal landscape. We're looking not just at portraits, we're looking at landscapes too. And we start off looking at trees. We have a couple of artists, um, Anselm Kiefer, that you can see here, work there, student response just here. And then you can see lots of nice tree drawings. We've got a positive and a negative just here. Got some nice little starter tasks that we've put on and then some really nice, very detailed drawings. Really beautiful work. From there we move on to pylons. I've got a bit of a fascination with them. So you can see a really nice page here where we divide up, divide the page up, do lots of nice pylon drawings. We look at an artist called Valerio Dospina, who captures perspective, personal responses of them. And then we incorporate into that some nice building drawings. So it's that combination between landscapes and buildings and, and quite urban structures. Okay, so I'm going to just pull out another student for you, because again, I want to make sure that you've got that broad kind of understanding of how different students have approached the topic. Okay, so again, we've got here the portraiture board. So some portraits, personal, self-portrait. Before that, we do individual studies of eyes, nose, mouth. Study here in the style of an artist called Giacometti. And again, interestingly, look, this student started on Develop and Explore, and then they did the switch. So it's just remember, don't worry too much about this. If you realise that you've got yourself on the wrong scheme of work, we can change. The animal board. So we're looking at different drawing different types of animal skins and really exploring those different textures. We do a lino, one colour lino print from them. Some really lovely animal drawings in the style of artists. This is Dave White, two beautiful studies there and then some animal drawings that we will add on as well. So another extension of the animal board just here. Some little polyboard prints, um, some etching, some nice geckos and an investigation into Aboriginal art. And then here we've got The trip to Q, or actually let me just show you first the tree board. So again, pylons, beautiful tree drawings. Now these were the start tasks, you know, when I get you to divide your page up into four and you draw. And interestingly, look how beautiful they are. Yeah, so sometimes those, those start tasks we do at the beginning end up becoming really good drawings that really add something to your project. So it's worth investing time in those. And then some paper cuts up the top here. And then a nice artist research page. And then the cue board, which both groups do. But again, it just depends where we are in lockdown with the pandemic as to whether or not we'll be going. So this is the student's cue board. Beautiful drawings. Lots and lots of photographs. And these photographs count towards your marks because you take them. Okay, so from these photos, some beautiful, drawn, painted responses. Absolutely stunning work. Okay, so I'm hoping, guys, that that is enough for you to be able to, to work out what you want to do. The easiest way to do it is to just look at the work and just think, which one? Which one, when I look at it, do I think, oh, God, I really want to have a go at that? I really want to have a go at that. That's the one you go for because that's, that's it with art. It's about the things that inspire you and the things that you want to be able to explore and to draw or to sculpt or whatever it might be. Now watch this on the Wednesday 
I know it's quite lengthy, but it is important. And then on the Thursday, I'm going to talk to all of you about what you want to do and which one you want to go for. So we're going to carry on with the dirt time while those things are happening, because there's not really going to be much of the lesson left once I've got round to seeing all of you and, and having that discussion. So we'll go through your books, get those balls looking as good as they can. And actually, I'm just going to show you really quickly as like the last thing. Okay, so just so you all understand the project you've been doing and its importance, these are the boards from my now year 10 group from last year, and you'll recognise things on here. The, the walnuts, the, these are the starter tasks, this is what I'm saying to you, invest time in those starter tasks. Positive and negative drawings, the pine cone, okay? The research page, Carl Blosfeld. These are the things that we can't do at the moment. These are our neutral strips. Unfortunately, we can't do those guys because you, a lot of you don't have paint at home and it just, it's just not fair unless you're all doing the same thing. So one board, okay, that was made from that project. And a second, the collage that you did with Miss Bagalio. Beautiful observational study of an apple. Beautiful colour observational study of some cherries. The colour wheel you guys have just finished. Research page on Georgia O'Keeffe. In actual fact, I need to double check whether or not we've done that, because if we haven't, that might be something that we can start whilst we're getting you sorted into your scheme, which scheme of work you're following. And then another board. And again, this is one of the tasks that you can't do. You can't do this and you can't do this one. But the pumpkin drawing, which you've done, the pepper drawing, which you've done again with Miss Bagalio. So that, that should help you to understand the value and the importance of the work you've done so far. We will still submit that if we think it's going to get you marks for your project. So watch this. Get yourself clear in your mind. Remember it's not set in stone. If you want to change your mind, we can have that discussion. I'm not going to force you to do anything you don't want to do, okay? This should be a decision that we both arrive at together that everybody is happy with. So I'm hoping that's going to be nice and clear. And I will see you guys next Thursday.